Hey everyone, my name is Nathan Pei. Welcome to Blue Ocean Crypto. Today we are going to be deep diving into the Mavia game deck so that you are prepared with everything you need to know for this amazing play to earn title. Heroes of Mavia is an online multiplayer blockchain based strategy game where players use their base and army to battle other players and compete for real cryptocurrency in a play to earn fashion. Players can purchase, rent, or partner with landowners to acquire and build a base in the game, earning more rewards as they battle with increasingly difficult bases built by players around the world. The game is set in a fantasy-themed island called Mavia, where the player is the commander of a base. The player's objective is to grow their base and army by using resources in the game gained from attacking other players' bases. The main resources in the game are gold, oil, and ruby, with ruby being one of the two cryptocurrencies used in Mavia's dual token model. 2021 brought NFTs to the mainstream with over 23 billion in trades. Heroes of Mavia is poised to capitalize on the virtual land craze going on right now by having created 10,000 pieces of land. You can currently find Mavia land NFTs available on the popular marketplace OpenSea as well as Binance and Coinbase and eventually will be available through their own in-game marketplace. Mavia was inspired by two of the largest games in the mobile app and blockchain gaming industries, taking the best elements from each and combining them into an experience never seen before. Heroes of Mavia takes a few key inspirations directly from Axie Infinity, such as the fact it's blockchain based, it's a play to earn model, it has NFT assets and collectibles. There's a dual token model, as well as the scholarship or partnership model. And finally, the proprietary NFT marketplace. And secondly, we have Clash of Clans. So a lot of the key inspirations taken from this game were things such as the base building game concept, online multiplayer gaming, live streaming and replaying of battles, leaderboards and profile stats. Also, you can't forget the decorations, skins, and customization. And finally, upgradable buildings, characters, and items. Being able to bring in a title that is focused on such a high level competitive play will truly allow the esports focus of games to bridge from web 2 to web 3, which is why I am so excited about the opportunity with Heroes of Mavia, beyond the fact that it's a AAA title, has an amazing team, and the art is phenomenal. The competitive aspect truly is amazing. The Mavia gameplay is designed to become increasingly challenging as players develop their base and improve their army and skills. Battling other players' bases online is the play to earn activity that gives rewards, whilst defeating stronger opponents yields greater ruby rewards. As players earn more ruby, they are also required to spend more ruby in order to advance their base to higher levels, requiring the investment of additional resources into the game. The reinvestment or direct investment of ruby into the Mavia ecosystem increases the inherent value of all game assets owned by the player. Players are able to earn ruby when successfully attacking an opponent's base, but they can also earn ruby for successfully defending their base from an enemy's attack with little to no damage, making it possible to earn even while not playing the game. As players prove their skill in the game, they are matched with equally skilled opponents to attack and defend against, always keeping the gameplay engaging and challenging for everyone. Huge key difference with Mavia versus Clash of Clans is the fact that the money you put in is increasing the overall value of all your assets 
which can always be resold down the road. With Clash, anything you put in is never coming back. There are a ton of other key differences that would take me a long time to go through. So what you should do is come join us on the Mavia Discord to continue this conversation and ask that very question. We look forward to seeing you there. Your army consists of vehicle, infantry, and air units, each with a clear tactical advantage. Upgrade your troops to increase their stats and their appearance. Defensive buildings and units attack your opponent's army and can be upgraded to increase their power and defensive abilities. At the core of any base is the headquarters, and upgrading the HQ level allows for more advanced buildings, traps, and troops to be built. Walls are the primary defense protecting your base and buildings from attackers. Walls can be upgraded and strategically positioned to funnel opponents into traps. Traps make it easier to defend your base against opponents and are typically hidden from attackers until their troops come in contact with the trap. Heroes defend your base from opponents and can also be used in offensive strikes. All heroes have special powers which can be used in attacks. Speaking about all these units, you can see in the Heroes of Mavia Discord, there's sneak peeks and even polls that allow the community members to vote on which type of skins they want to see on their favorite units. Make sure you're there so you can be part of that action. The Mavia ecosystem is generated by two cryptocurrencies, Mavia and Ruby. Mavia is the governance token and the only currency used to exchange NFTs on the Mavia marketplace. The Mavia token will also be used for land staking rewards and prizes. It is important to note that the Mavia token is not an in-game resource. Ruby is the in-game play to earn reward currency that allows the player to upgrade their NFTs. It can be deposited and withdrawn from the game. Ruby spent upgrading your NFTs in game will be automatically burnt. There are three different types of NFTs, each with their own unique purpose and value in the game. For bases or land, bases are at the core of Heroes of Mavia and owning a base is required. For heroes, heroes assist players in both attacking opponents' bases as well as protecting the home base in defensive battles. And lastly, for statues, statues can be placed on a base to give a boost to base stats, production rates, and more. Now, one other thing to mention is there is a free-to-play aspect that when the game launches, you do not need to own one of the NFT land assets in order to play, but in order to take advantage of the play-to-earn model, that's where you're going to need one of the NFT lands. Be sure to stay tuned to the end of the video so you're fully up to speed with everything you need to know to be ready for Mavia. Mavia has transformed base building into wealth building. Each base acts as its own entity with a custom name chosen by the owner and unique coordinates on the Mavia Island map. Each base is a unique NFT which can be resold on the marketplace, rented out for passive income, or placed into a partnership for a new user to use the base and split Ruby profits 50-50 with the owner. At the heart of each base is the Headquarters, or HQ, which allows users to upgrade base buildings, troops, heroes, and more. Headquarters, unlike all other base buildings, can only be upgraded using Ruby, giving greater economic value to higher level HQ bases. Upgrading a base's HQ level also increases the daily maximum ruby earning limit, which will incentivize players to reinvest their ruby earnings into their base instead of withdrawing it from the ecosystem. As the player grows their base and upgrades their army and buildings, the upgrades are permanently attached to the NFT. 
growing the economic value of the base. A single player can own, control multiple bases, similar to how a landlord can own multiple hosts and rent them out. Each base on the island can be viewed via the Base Explorer, available to the public on the Mavia website. All battles are permanently recorded and all base activity is visible to anyone. Each base is able to equip a maximum of four heroes who can defend the base from opponents and can also join in offensive attacks against rival bases. Each hero has a special attack and can be strategically used in battle to lead an army to victory. Similar to bases, each hero is a unique NFT that is limited in quantity. Heroes can only be bought and sold for Mavia tokens on the marketplace. Heroes can be upgraded with Ruby, increasing their in-game stats such as attack, defense, speed, and more. Players can purchase additional skins for heroes, which can be enabled or disabled at any time. All skins purchased for a hero are permanently attached to the NFT, increasing the hero's resale value on the market. All skins can be purchased with Ruby inside of the game, creating another opportunity for players to reinvest their earnings into their in-game assets. All hero NFTs can be tracked and explored on the Mavia website, allowing new players to follow the top heroes in the game and learn from other players' strategies for using heroes in battle. A single player can own as many heroes as they would like, but can only equip four heroes at a time for each base. Heroes can be interchanged at any time. Statues provide boosts for the base that they are active on and can be upgraded to increase their unique powers. A base can hold up to four statues at any given time. Statue powers increase the speed and efficiency of the base, such as resource production, cooldown time, building time, troop training time, and more. Each statue can only boost one specific variable of a base, giving the player many options to form a strategy for combining several statues. Similar to heroes and bases, the statues can be viewed on the Mavia Explorer and their use can be tracked on the platform. First off, let's take a look at the Mavia token. Regardless of the token, let's assume we have to visit an exchange in order to acquire either Ruby or Mavia. Let's pretend we buy 100 Mavia and then add them to our MetaMask wallet, which we will now use to buy NFTs such as a base, hero, and statue on the marketplace for no fee. We can then use these assets to play the game and earn the in-game currency Ruby. Now, let's look at Ruby. When we purchase Ruby and deposit it into our Mavia account, we will be granted a bonus of 10%. We can then use the ruby that we deposited, along with any ruby that we won or acquired through playing the game, to upgrade our various Mavia NFTs. Doing so, in turn, will progress you through the game and allow you to win more ruby. If ever the need arises, you can withdraw your ruby and sell it on the exchange However, to encourage the use of Ruby in-game, the Mavia team has implemented a 15% withdrawal fee which will auto-burn upon withdrawal. This fee only applies to the withdrawal of Ruby from in-game. If you ever decide to sell your NFT assets, you can do so on the marketplace for no fee in exchange for the Mavia token. This system is by far the best I've seen. There is a lot of inherent issues in current play to earn titles and their tokenomics. Mavia is addressing these very well with this system. By encouraging the reinvestment of Ruby into our game assets, they simultaneously address token inflation and allow us to increase the value of our NFT assets. In my opinion, this should keep liquidity within the game, but also provide a path to exit if you so desire. Now, what can we spend all this ruby on? 
The Ruby Currency is the core play to earn cryptocurrency rewarded for winning battles and achievements. Ruby has several vital purposes in the game which it can be spent on. Base HQ, heroes, and statues can only be upgraded using Ruby. By attaching a financial commitment to upgrading your base HQ, Mavia has created a store of value within the NFT. As you level up your headquarters, the value of the asset will increase due to the financial investment of the upgrade. You can use Ruby to upgrade the attack, defense, and speed stats of your various hero NFTs, which should make taking on your next opponent a little easier. Further bonuses will be awarded to the bases with statues. Upgrade your statues to increase the bonus you receive. Your base will produce two additional resources, gold and oil. Users can exchange Ruby in-game to acquire missing resources without having to wait for them to be earned in the game. For those that have played Clash of Clans, you are probably familiar with the wait time to construct new troops, building upgrades, and other frustrating timed processes. Well, in Mavia, we can use Ruby to speed up these wait times. If you want to outfit your troops in Easter Bunny skins, that's, well, your choice, but you'll be able to use your Ruby to do so, permanently adding value to their parent NFTs. Ruby is only created through the successful actions of the players in the game as shown here. The amount of Ruby awarded to the player depends on their base level, the difficulty of the action, and other potential variables. You'll receive Ruby by attacking and successfully defeating the opponent's base. It'll take a minimum of 50% damage to claim victory. Upon doing so, Ruby is minted and credited to the player's account. You will be rewarded Ruby when you hold off an attacker sustaining 33% damage or less. If successful, the defending base's owner will be credited Ruby directly to their account. Random obstacles will sometime appear on a player's base and need removal. Removing the obstacle will reveal the Ruby reward underneath. This incentivizes players to check their base daily. Daily challenges will be available to all players, allowing anyone to earn additional Ruby. Base owners can find a partner for their base, allowing other players to manage the base and providing passive Ruby income to the base owner. And finally, players can battle for Ruby with each player putting up an equal amount of Ruby and the winner takes all. Wager matches, let's go! Bases can be purchased and sold for the Mavia token on the Mavia Marketplace. The value of the base can grow depending on how much time is invested in and the amount of oil, gold, and ruby that's been invested into the base. By renting out your base, you will agree to a fixed daily rate of Mavia for your base as well as the duration of the lease. The owner isn't entitled to any of the ruby produced by the base and only receives the agreed rental funds. By partnering with a player, the ownership of the base remains in your hands. The partner player uses the base but splits the proceeds of Ruby from the base usage 50-50. And what's really cool is you don't have to do a 50-50 split. You as the original landowner can actually set whatever split you're most comfortable with when you list it on the marketplace. The Mavia web platform provides an easy to use interface for exploring the world of Mavia both in and outside the game. Players can browse the NFT marketplace, manage their base rentals and income, view player stats, see other players' base details, replay past battles, and much more. The Mavia marketplace is located only one tab away from the Mavia game itself allowing users to intuitively browse, buy, and sell NFTs to be used and deployed inside the Mavia game. 
players can purchase heroes, statues, and even bases with a few clicks and immediately begin using those same NFTs in the game only a few moments later. The marketplace implements proven NFT exchange logic in addition to brand new NFT rental wrapping technology developed specifically for Mavia bases. You can buy and sell bases, heroes and statues with the Mavia token as the core medium of exchange, rent your base for Mavia tokens via the novel base wrapping technology allowing base NFT owners to mint a synthetic base clone to give to tenants without risking ownership of the original base NFT. You can also find base partners on the marketplace, allowing you to turn your own base NFT into a passive Ruby income generating machine. And finally, you can view all previously sold NFTs, their owners, and their current stats and battle history. Mavia will work on desktop and mobile browsers like Chrome, Safari, and Firefox with no download required. In version 2, the Android and iOS mobile apps will be released, making the mobile Mavia experience even stronger. So it's very well known in Clash of Clans that you specifically want to make sure you're using a mobile device, such as a tablet or a phone, because it gives you the ability to drop multiple troops. So I would guess that in version 1 it's going to be best to use the version through Chrome or Safari or other mobile supported browsers and then of course once we get to version 2 this will be a lot more easy to be accommodated. Users can sync their Mavia accounts to a Telegram bot that sends push notifications for in-game activity. The Mavia team is developing multi-language support both inside the game and on the web platform. Mavia will have a public-facing API allowing users to build apps on top of the Mavia ecosystem. Similar to a blockchain of battles, users will be able to replay all previously fought battles by any base and player. All earnings and spending of Ruby are tracked and shown publicly on the Mavia Explorer. All character, base stats, and gameplay documentation are recorded in an easy to read format for all players. A huge feature here is the fact that all matches are going to be recorded. One of the largest limitations in my opinion in Clash of Clans was the ability to only be able to go back 24 to 48 hours. So for alliances, we're going to be able to look at new recruits past attacks. We're going to be able to study some of the best players in the game and see their entire progression. This is absolutely going to change the entire competitive scene. So looking here at the allocation type and supply percentage, we start off with private sale at 15%, ecosystem fund at 25, staking rewards also at 25, the Scrice team 22, advisors three, and finally play to earn 10%. I'm particularly excited to see the staking rewards at an entire quarter of the allocation that's definitely something I'm going to want to make sure I'm involved in. And then I'm also really happy to see that the Scrice team is at 22%. This shows that all of the team is going to be dedicated extremely highly to the overall success of this project. Let's take a look at the roadmap as it was updated on May 12th. Currently, we are sitting in Q2 of 2022, and I'm sure the entire community is eagerly awaiting the results from alpha testing. Now, what's super exciting to me, and I'm sure a lot of other people, is just around the corner in Q3 is the landowner beta testing. So obviously, you have to have one of the NFT land assets in order to be able to participate in this beta. Then, Right around the corner in Q4, not only do we have V1 of the game launching, we also have the Mavia and Ruby token. Scry Studios was formed by industry veterans spanning a wide range of fields, joining together to work exclusively on the Heroes of Mavia game. Scry Studios are headquartered in Hanoi, Vietnam, with additional staff spanning across the world, including the United States, Brazil, Germany and Ukraine. Here at Blue Ocean Crypto, we are going to be dedicated to following all the awesome updates that Heroes of Mavia 
and Scry Studios team has to offer leading up and through the beta, official game launch, and long into the future. I hope you continue to join us for this wild and exciting ride, which in my opinion is one of the most promising blockchain play to earn titles to date. And until next time, cheers. I want to play.